So uh, please, uh, you know, uh, Barry has done uh, many, many presentations uh, for us in the past. Uh, of course, he's a Santa Fe uh, man, and, and most of us uh, are still modeling uh, Eastern Railroad. So it's always uh, uh, good to hear uh, what was happening out on the on the West Coast, So uh, and especially nearly 50 years ago. So thank you, Barry, and I'll, I'll let you get going on it. Okay, thank you, Russ, for inviting me. And thank you to Robin for helping me with the scans and the PowerPoint and then providing some commentary today. And of course, always to Fred and Ron for the IT help, we're grateful. So, so nearly 50 years ago, I was in high school and I would grab our family's 126 Instamatic camera and I would take train photos. Finally, my father trusted me enough to borrow his Argus C3 35 millimeter camera and I started taking Kodachromes. So the Instamatic lens was not good for much, except for roster shots. The Kodak film, however, did a good job of capturing the color. So this is a series of photo essays about interesting trains that I photographed in Orange County and Los Angeles and on family vacations in the early 1970s. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, it's not working. See if I can get the other thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little stubborn. Okay. Oh, I see him down there. All right. Now it should work. Okay. Once you get it going. Oh, you got to have to prime it, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Kick it. Kick it. All right. Well, it's been kicked. So, well, speaking of kicking cars, um, this is a, a Santa Fe S4, Alco S4 number 1506, built in 1951, and it's nearing its end of its service life, kicking cars in Fullerton. This is a sunny afternoon and Thanksgiving, uh, November 23 of 1972. And it's almost done with its life. Of course, Santa Fe, the S4s actually met their demise before the S2s. The very last Alco switcher was Newton, Kansas. It was an S2 in 1978. All the Fords were gone by 1977. And they did have a good fleet of Alco switchers. Now, this was taken on the same day. And this is in Fullerton, again, my hometown. And uh, this locomotive has just been rebuilt at Claiborne, Texas. It was built rebuilt from F7A308C, a passenger locomotive, formerly 22L. Now it's a freight locomotive, 2554. And it's got that brilliant yellow war bonnet paint scheme that's literally a brand new paint scheme for Santa Fe. And it will begin, it, begin its chores of kicking cars around in Fullerton. The spark arresters will quickly disappear and then that beautiful round cab there will later in life be replaced by an angled Topeka design cab. <clears throat> the cabs from the original S7, everything else came out at the Topeka shops and was assembled at flavor. Even the frames were brand new. So originally, visitors from the east on the Santa Fe, like Jeep 20s, Jeep 39s, and this Jeep 38 in this photo, 3524, would break the monotony of Jeep 30s and 35s, which were the normal power on set outs and pickups at Fullerton. Now this locomotive also models the new scheme of the aluminum painted trucks, aluminum colored painted trucks, and it's on an eastbound freight on New Year's weekend, January 75. So this locomotive is soon to be rebuilt. It's an SD26, was what it will be when it comes out of the shops. Right now, it's still an SD244534 in the old paint scheme. And it is in mid consist at Bakersfield, California, right in a moment of storm light uh, during Christmas season, December 22nd of 73. So Santa Fe added to their original fleet of SD45s when the Dash 2 era arrived. And this is SD45 Dash 2 built in May of 72 by EMD. So this is one of the early orders before the yellow war bonnet arrived. 
This one is on a westbound freight at Fullerton and that kind of gloomy weather, we called it June gloom in Southern California and it would last all summer long. This is August 15th of 1973. So very soon the next order would have the yellow war bonnet scheme and also the bicentennial commemorative scheme. So Santa Fe's F-45 fleet was designed to supplement the FP-45s in passenger service whenever needed. So we're at Los Angeles Union Passenger Terminal on spring break, a rail fan excursion on April 20th of 73. F-45-5934 built in um, July of 68, along with 5932, and a little bit of extra help from an old F-7B 305A and a steam generator car 131 because the F-45s didn't have steam generators. And this is has just arrived powering the combined Super Chief and El Capitan into the Golden State. Now we'll ship to the Union Pacific Railroad. And uh, this is Union Pacific Jeep 9, number 315. And it provides dependable transportation as it switches the cars at the Anaheim local in my hometown, Fullerton. This was also Thanksgiving weekend of 72. <clears throat> This is a Jeep 30, it's number 860, and it handles the train called the Tuna Fish Local. And it has another Jeep 30 helping out. And uh, it's at Long Beach, California, fishing, uh, switching the um, tuna canneries. And this is the start of summer break, June 29 of 74. This is a Jeep 35 743, it's built in May of 64 and it's laying over between assignments at East Los Angeles Yard. That's the big Union Pacific Yard in LA. Summer vacation, August of 74. And notice it has what's called an ACI label on the center handrail stanchion there. That was a ID system that had just been developed in the late 60s. <clears throat> this is a e EMD NW2 switcher, 1056. Pretty soon it will go into the shops and be rebuilt into an SW10. But right now it's resting with its sisters between switching duties at East Los Angeles, again, August of 74. Notice the water tower in the background. <clears throat> okay, now we're on my very first Amtrak trip uh, out of the state of California and um, UPE 9A 948 built by EMD in May of 55 is about to become Amtrak number 425, and it was leading our power consist. Right now though, it's moving to the west end of the Amtrak San Francisco Zephyr that I'm riding on. We've just arrived in Cheyenne, Wyoming, eastbound on August 13 of 72. Now the power will take the train backwards down to Denver, Colorado and hand it over to a forward connection eastbound on the Burlington Northern using CB and QE units to Chicago. <clears throat> Back home, we've got UP caboose, uh, it's a, called a CA5 class caboose, 25245. Notice there's a little tiny patch below the number there. That's because this one is assigned directly to the Anaheim local and it's pausing during the switching moves in Fullerton, Thanksgiving of 72. All right, next we're just gonna to go to some miscellaneous topics around the area. This is a Santa Fe roadbed weed chemical spray car. It's number 199202. It was converted at Claiborne in 64 from a heavyweight baggage car 2050. Right here, it's leading a maintenance away train and it's covering the Santa Fe mainline eastbound. At the moment I took the picture, it's about to cross the Union Pacific Anaheim branch at a place called Basta. It's January 20th of 73. In a few months, it'll be repainted from its regulation Santa Fe aluminum colored paint to a lively and unique blue and yellow paint scheme. By the way, the crew very kindly turned off the weed spray just when they went by me, or I might not be here today. Yeah. But it, it's, is it actively spraying there? It, looks like it is at the it moment I take the picture. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, no. No, 
uh, there's a Jeep 35 or something behind the tank cars. Right, just constant flow. Usually I saw this on the old Orient line southwest of uh, San Antonio, or not San Antonio, but uh, in southwest of Adeline in Texas, headed towards Fort Stockton in 78. So it got even on the secondaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all over the system. All right. So Santa Fe rebuilt some of their cabooses for local service. The rebuild was really nice. It did not have cushion couplers, but otherwise it was good. And um, this one is CE7 number 1589. It's just out of the shops at San Bernardino, uh, April 6th of 1974, and it's serving at Fullerton there as designed. <clears throat> so this locomotive, Amtrak 952, um, was built by Union Pacific or by EMD for Union Pacific in June of 55 as number. Oh, I got that backwards. It was UP 952. Now it's 426 on Amtrak. This is the original Amtrak phase one paint scheme. And this locomotive is on the San Joaquin train and it's arriving southbound at Bakersfield. It's terminus, a cloudy spring day of March 74. Now, Santa Fe combined a small fleet of their remaining passenger F units for Amtrak to use. They renumbered them in the early 300s. This particular one was repainted as a yellow war bonnet, number 304, and its uh, shining paint is leading a southbound San Diego train at Fullerton on a beautiful autumn morning, September 30th of 72. So Amtrak bought some former Burlington Twin Zephyr baggage buffet lounge cars, 800 and 801. They were built by Bud in 47. They renumbered them 1720 and this one 1721 and brought them out to use on the San Diegans. This car is called the Silver Salon and it's on a very busy southbound holiday train, Thanksgiving 72. <clears throat> So the popularity of the San Diegans and special seasonal trains was increasing. And so Amtrak purchased a group of Southern Pacific coaches to briefly tide them over until the brand new Amfleet trains arrived in Southern California in June of 76. They just painted out the red letter boards and slapped on patches with the new numbers. Southern Pacific had rebuilt this car from a tavern car number 10317 from Pullman Standard in 49. They stuffed 86 seats, seats in this coach and numbered it 2241 in 1963. Note that the various window levels and no doors, no side doors, all from when it was a tavern car. So um, Amtrak renumbered these into a limited use series in the 7500s. And on this train in April of 11, it was packed with springtime passengers going northbound at Fullerton there. Now let's continue to the Southern Pacific. <clears throat> this uh, EMD SW8 switcher was built in 1953. 1123 is at the Bullring Yard near Los Angeles Union Passenger Terminal and it's Christmas break, 122972. This was a direct predecessor in EMD's catalog of the almost identical SW900, which often came out to Orange County on assignments. Notice in front of it is a spring switch in the foreground with an S designation on the stand. Notice the ash can headlight up there on the front. And also these are dynamic brake equipped. Uh, these were purchased with uh, ca uh, CAF units and were originally assigned to the Northwestern Pacific. So the dynamic brakes is just in front of the cab. The uh, grids are on the side there. Okay, another uh, builder is Baldwin. 1953 also, S12 number 2150, also at Bullring Yard on the same day. And again, those strange looking headlights that was an SP trademark there. Also on the same day, another builder, Alco, 1955 built S6 switcher 1226. This was very common model in Los Angeles area. <clears throat> so the switchers at Bullring here, these switchers, they would trundle down um, Alameda Boulevard 
in downtown Los Angeles on street trackage, but only at night or on the weekends. And they would take um, cuts of cars to 8th Street Yard and Butte Street Yard on the south side. The time the train ran and the train links were controlled to keep traffic from getting congested. These were built with the 251 series at a time when Montreal was still building using the uh, 539 in switchers. And in fact, there were S4s with the 539 being built at the same time. Okay, our last one at Bullring Yard is um, EMD SD7 number 2714 built in January of 53. So right above Bullring is Chinatown and Dodger Stadium just beyond that in Los Angeles. Big barrel headlight we talked about before. And um, when these would go in for their rebuilding later on to become um, mostly yard and transfer engines, they would lose those unusual headlights. All right, right next to Bullring Yard and Los Angeles Union Passenger Terminal were the old freight houses. And this is where the less than carload freight was handled. And I was really amazed that day when I was out to find a silver SP 40 foot overnight box car. That's their special specialized service for less than carload. And it had been renumbered into a freight numbering, but it was sitting at that facility that afternoon. Now we're down at Union Station itself and we have the Coast Starlight Amtrak's train ready to go north same day. And uh, it's using leased power from Southern Pacific's passenger locomotive stable. And it included a modern SDP 45 3204 built in May of 67. Notice the rooftop bells mounted on the bracket. It's another SP tradition and those beautiful five chime horns. That was standard issue for passenger locomotives and freight uh, locomotives also had a beautiful three chime horn. So venerable EMD FP7 number 6453 built in February of 53 was assisting the SDPs on the starlight that day. It had been sold to Amtrak uh, earlier than the year and it would become eventually their number 116. Notice the cool icebreakers on the roof. It would knock icicles off of snow sheds and tunnels, ceilings to prevent window breakage in the dome cars. The diamond over the number there, the 6453, says that it has internal uh, screens to catch sparks. Yeah, there were a number of different symbols like that SPUs for various purposes. <clears throat> All right, on the south lead to Bullring Yard, um, it connected into Southern Pacific's Sunset Route, and it passed the throat of Union Station at Mission Tower. And that's where I caught this 1965 Alco Century 628, number 3132. This was January 24th of 75. The Century 628s and 630s were rewired in 73 and 74 at Houston shops to be used in yard service at the West Colton Yard and for what SP calls haulers. Those are inner yard transfer trains. Notice the in the earlier Roman styled SP lettering on the nose of the Alco engine there. So they no longer had transition, so they were not useful for road service. Right. So also same location. This is a 1964 built BMD Jeep 35, 6557. It's another eastbound hauler coming out of Bullring, same day. Locomotives congregated at Tucson later in life, and the shops there became expert at maintaining their unique electricals. And the little dot over the 55 there, that means it's turbocharged and SP's system of designating things. Right, because as they did rebuild projects, some of them were deturboed. Okay, now we're uh, looking at some older power. This is 1959 uh, GP9 3701. Same consist. Note that its upper headlights have been removed. This is a really sad trend of the early 70s. The Jeeps and the other models were going through a rebuild program called GRIP at the Sacramento shops. 
and they would add an E to their model designation after rebuilding. Sadly, uh, ripping off the headlights became common in the 80s for all locomotives. Another Jeep 9, this time leading a freight at Pomona, California on the Sunset Route. It has its full SP light package on the nose, June of 75. So the Southern Pacific bought many orders of Jeep 9s, 339 total from 54 to 59. So variations in the orders required variations in the rebuild process as well. So here we have a late model Jeep 9, 3724. It was built with a low nose and larger fans, and it's leading an eastbound freight on the Sunset Route at the Pomona SP Depot on the same day. <clears throat> so um, when there was power laying over at Taylor Shops on near Union Station, they occasionally would make a quick hauler trip down to Dolores Yard in Dominguez and back on the SP or on the Pacific Electric Harbor Lines. So this uh, low nose unit is a Jeep 20, 4085 built in August of 60. And it's laying over at Dolores Yard on June of 74 before heading back. Um, I don't have a picture of it in this presentation, but you'll see the locomotive just to the right is a passenger engine. That's actually an Amtrak engine. And they're uh, loaning it out for the day. <clears throat> Dolores is their yard for this uh, Long Beach area. Right. Uh, lines converge and then uh, spread out from that yard to many places in the area. Okay. General Electric products. This is a U25B 6759. It's uh, also laying over at Dolores in Dominguez. And a few years later, four of these locomotives were rebuilt with Swiss Sulcer diesels, and they were repainted into a daylight red and orange revival paint scheme. And another GE product is the U28C, 7153. It's sandwiched between a newer U33C and another Jeep 9. So this is an eastbound freight leaving downtown Los Angeles in um, April of 73. These big six axle GEs, they often were on the iron ore trains from Eagle Mountain near the Salton Sea to the Kaiser Steel Mill in Fontana. One of the things about the SP in Santa Fe to a certain extent is that even this late, they were still buying specific models for specific usages. These 10 U28Cs were built for the Kaiser iron ore trains. They had 20 SD or no, 26 SD39s that were just used for helpers on Cajon and uh, Saugus line, um, U30C, about 37 of them. They were specifically purchased for the helper and operations in Southern California, specifically weight, uh, much heavier weights than on the U33Cs they used on their Transcon main lines. And another example is SD38-2s for um, hump locomotives at West Colton with uh, slugs. Okay. A more contemporary switcher model, this is a 1966 center cab Alco Century 415 2401, a rare model for Alco. It was often at the Orange County Base of Operations in West Anaheim. This is August of 74. It has a raised cab option, higher cab than normal. It also has the dual controls option, and that created a very cramped environment in the cab there. This uh, locomotive will be coming out next year in a HO scale model. They were almost always ran short nose to short nose because that evened out weight distribution problems that they had with it. Basically, you've got engine and generator in the long hood, radiator and everything in the short hood. It didn't quite work out balanced weight wise. So you can see the one behind it is the short nose hooked up there. Hey, Barry, you said, mm -hmm. you said it's coming out in HO next year from the Bowser. Bowser. It just got announced. And um, if you guys like Diesel Era Magazine, um, they're doing a, a two articles on Century 415s right now. All right. Um, 
This is our last slide uh, for this part of the presentation. It's another newer switcher, EMD SW1500-2474, also uh, August of 67. So it's powering a local through my hometown Fullerton. It's going out to the gigantic Hunt Wesson Foods plant in September of 72. Notice the caboose behind it has a cupola rather than a, a bay window. The older SP cupola cabooses ended up on the local jobs like this, and the main line was where you'd find the bay windows. So this, um, as I mentioned earlier during the contest, this will come out later this year from Rapido, that, that car, that, that's caboose. So this job originated at that West Anaheim facility where we saw the Century 415. It then connected onto the Union Pacific's Anaheim branch, and it exercised trackage rights. And these were negotiated when the Pacific Electric Fullerton branch was abandoned. So SP operated on this branch between midnight and noon, and the UP came down and operated between noon and midnight. So there was a time space uh, operation there. These were affectionately known as crud on the <laughs> Southern Pacific. <laughs> and by rail fans. And in part because SP never felt the need to maintain them because they weren't going out on the main line per se. And when Union Pacific took the SP roster in, they basically put about half of these things out to pasture because they'd never been rebuilt or anything along the way. And this one time, the LA Basin, which is basically the size of Louisville to Elizabethtown to Lexington, had over 60 SW1500s assigned to the various yards. Right. This was system wide engine, hundreds and hundreds of them. And yeah, they were not maintained real well. All righty. Now we're going to switch gears. So um, I'm going to share with you about my model railroad, and you will see a number of these locomotives showing up, and even more in the next year. But um, my model railroad is called the Saddleback Branch of the ATNSF Railway. So it's a point to point switching layout. And I started building it in 2004. And I decided to have a fictitious name, Saddleback, of a citrus district line in Orange County where I grew up. So this is in the citrus belt where a lot of oranges were packed. So it is a proto freelance. But it does have many realistic elements, uh, and I dated it July of 1974, 50 years ago this month or this summer. So it's uh, in the transition era between the agricultural roots of Orange County and the new suburban landscapes uh, that were coming in. Previously, I had three layouts. Uh, as a child, I had an HO scale Santa Fe loop from the Sears catalog, which I dearly love. Then as a middle schooler, an uh, N-scale layout, which I called the Santiago Industrial Railroad, also named after a landmark in Orange County. And then later in life, an uh, N-scale Central Pacific Mining Branch. So this layout is 36 square feet and it has 33 linear feet of track. Um, it's built um, originally on desktops and cabinets with foam insulation boards. It eventually grew to the size of a large U and it was covered with plaster cloth for scenic elements. I used Cotto sectional track and MRC, the original Prod Prodigy Express DCC. And then several years ago, I converted it to uh, ply birch plywood boards mounted on bookcases. So it's a stand up railroad <laughs> and again in a U shape. So I tried um, painting it and then while the paint was wet, putting a sand on it to, to imitate gravel as a scenic base. And that was a spectacular failure. So <laughs> yeah. you will see that in just a moment. So um, this layout will eventually morph into um, a layout with uh, Code 83 Atlas Flex Track and Walther Shinohara turnouts. Ironically, at the moment, I finished packing this layout up last weekend because I'm retiring on May 31st and the apartment in Elizabethtown and my uh, work down there will end. And this layout will be reincarnated in Louisville in much more glory, hopefully. This is HO, not Yes, this one's HO. So uh, the layout design elements are uh, partly agricultural, citrus groves, tomato fields, sugar beets, beef cattle and dairy cattle, all of which was big in Orange County. And then industrial, the packing houses, 
a box factory, a produce distributor, a cold storage unit, a feed mill for the cattle. We have a lot of oil drilling in Orange County and a lumber yard for all those suburban housing developments. So older bungalows from the earlier days, newer ranch houses and buildings under construction. For the rail facilities, it has a depot and a freight house, a shanty and some maintenance away, and then a team track, a layover track for the power and a runaround track. And for supporting the industries, an ice deck and an ice plant, a truck depot and a truck scales. So the op sessions are about 30 minutes a week using the single MRC DCC cab. I also have an MRC DC power pack, uh, not using it much anymore, but from time to time. The entire branch is within yard limits in the town of Saddleback for train control. And uh, it, it features both turns from Fullerton and Santa Ana that come down to switch the Saddleback branch. And then the Southern Pacific has its trackage rights since the PE branch abandoned. You can see these elements coming in here. Santa Fe operates from noon to midnight and the SP from midnight to noon. And it's an authentic Santa Fe switch list that I use. Now, the UP was requesting haulage rights, and I'll just share with you those haulage rights were granted because they rebuilt the big boy. If they hadn't rebuilt the big boy, I wouldn't have let them on my railroad. But <laughs> So that's kind of late breaking news, actually, since 2019. <laughs> yeah, it was an influence. So I have forgiven Union Pacific now. I just want you to know they used to be the un- popular, but not anymore. So as you will see, it's a transition from ALCO to EMD power from uh, newer and rebuilt locomotives and older and newer cabooses. So let's take a look. So here we are. This is um, the uh, National Orange Company, Sunkissed Citrus Packing House, and uh, CF7 number 25 12 is newly rebuilt from an F7A and it's in service and it's spotting a mechanical reefer at the house there for a shipment of Valencia oranges. So the CF7 is an Athern, Athern ready to run with DC sound added. And the authentic reefer is from Intermountain. That reefer trailer with the Sunkist is from Trainworks. And, and the packing house is a Yestergear kit. Uh, that is an authentic prototype from Riverside, California. Thanks to the Smithsonian, they saved all the blueprints because it burned down uh, a number of years back. Each one of those tar paper roofing shambles. <laughs> How long did it take you to build this? About a year? No, it was months. And yeah, they're all individually applied. So yeah. Did it or was it? No, no, it's a kit from a company called Yesteryear, which is now Yesteryear. They don't exist anymore. Really, <laughs> They are. So the freight house at Saddleback is now a maintenance away warehouse. And it's right next to the depot, which is now a Greyhound depot and a transit bus station, mm -hmm. thanks to Amtrak. So the structure is a cornerstone kit of the Portales New Mexico prototype. And I did add actual plaster onto it to authentic authenticate the look there. And the um, 1970s MCI Greyhound and flexible um, RTD bus are from Iconic Replica Models, my favorite diecast model company. Okay, here comes an S4, number 1526. It's only months away from retirement. I don't know why it's in such good condition. That's the Santa Fe for you. Um, it's idling while the crew of the Saddleback Turn is at uh, taking beans inside Norma's smorgasbord across from the Saddleback Depot. So my mom's name was Norma. We were Scandinavian. So we have a smorgasbord restaurant on the layout. So this is an Alco. Uh, modeled by Atlas with DCC sound installed later. And um, the restaurant is from Hellion. And it is a kit of Hans Christian Andersen's birthplace in Denmark on the same island that my great grandfather was born. Okay, a wholesale Christmas tree distributor crew has finally finished unloading this modernized Santa Fe 40 foot box car, freshly cut pine trees. So they're enjoying a game of checkers outside the yard shanty at Saddleback. 
The boxcar is Athern and the Shanty is that classic Atlas kit. I bet you built one of those. Still there, yeah. Or the wholesale, oh, I did that one. JW Flammer is the a feed crew, a feed mill company. And the crew is unloading another hopper car of cattle feed for the local dairies and beef ranches. So the farmers will be soon relocating to the outlying counties as agriculture gives way to the new housing developments. So the supply house is a classic lifelike kit and the authentic covered hopper is from Athern. Thank you, Athern. <clears throat> okay, newly refurbished SP composite gondola with those extended sides. It's gonna deliver its load of sugar beets to the Holly Mill Sugar Mill for the very last season of locally sourced sugar beets in 1974. That brand new Burlington Northern Center partition flat car, which was a technology that was pioneered by Burlington Northern, will deliver a load of Union Forest products to the lumber yard for all those new houses to be built on the former sugar beet rows. The authentic gondola is an inner mountain and I used anise seed for the sugar beets. And the flat car is exact rail with a Jagger products load. Tell us, tell us yeah, Jagger. Yeah. Right. Jager's so wonderful. The, uh, yeah, the sugar beet trains uh, used these all the way into the 90s. Friction trucks, mm -hmm. maximum speed allowed was 30 miles an hour mm -hmm. and well beyond their normal AAR certificates. Uh, Pentrax has a wonderful video mm -hmm. on the last run of a sugar beet train that is still available. And that video shows the whole process, loading in the fields, and unloading at the refinery and then refining sugar. It's amazing. Wonderful cab ride up the coastline is part of it. Yes. Okay, Del Monte's California Packing Corporation Food Products Facility is filling up a spacious new Santa Fe double door insulated box car with canned tomato products and also filling that Bud of California 40 foot reefer trailer with fresh tomatoes. They're all heading to Eastern markets on Santa Fe hotshot intermodals. So the packing house is a cornerstone kit and it's an authentic structure from Santa Ana, California. And the prototype is from BML, BLMA, now part of Atlas. The reefer is again by Trainworks. I love Trainworks. Fortunately, you cannot smell the smell of Hunt's factory. Right. So when they were canning, the whole city smelled like rotten tomatoes. What, what did you say the building kit was? It's, it's Walther's Cornerstone. It's called Valley Packers, and it's an, it is an authentic building from Santa Ana, California that was a Del Monte building, and, and the signage is all... Um, I like the silver smokestack. Yes, right, that's cool. So the um, this is compressed. The actual building was about twice that, oh, sure. tri twice that big. Okay, this is our seven-year-old SW 1500 2480. It's just spotted a load of fiberboard at the in an evergreen freight car, insulated box car at the Sunkissed box plant at, at Saddleback. So the brakeman is giving the maintenance away crew a greeting there. So the switcher is at there and ready to run with DCC sound installed aftermarket. And the authentic box car is at there in Genesis. Ford F100 is Atlas motoring. And the Citrus Exchange is uh, from Alpine and it's loosely based on a citrus um, packing house in Anaheim. Okay, the engineer of the newly rebuilt Jeep 9R 3384 is given a wave to the Chevron tank truck driver as the locomotive is fueled before picking up a newly rebuilt Bay Window Caboose 4022. The Santa Fe gondola has a load of sheet metal and uh, Jeep 9R is Athern Genesis with DCC. The caboose is Centralia Car Shops and the gondola is a blue box kit. The Ford Super Duty truck is from Athern and the F600 is from Classic Metalworks. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. That is called a wheel loader and it's got a claw, it's from Kibri. So it's doing the loading on the, um, on the uh, coiled steel. That Quonset hut is from Rick's and the tool shed is laser, laser art and the windmill is cornerstone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the county firefighters. They've got their hook and ladder truck out 
and they're showering water onto a loaded Santa Fe gasoline car <laughs> because there was a welding fire on the roof of the Exxon oil field warehouse and an injured welder is being brought down for first aid. So the tank car is at and ready to run. Later, I replaced these with some really awesome, authentic Santa Fe tank cars. Uh, trying to remember the name of the company. American, I think. But, no longer, which is sad. Yes, right. We're hoping they may the tooling might get picked up. Yes. It did. It did. It did. Is, is it Roca? Okay. It's a secret. That's good news. Yes, yes. So the American LaFrance aerial ladder is from Bush. The fire crew is Woodland Scenics. The horse head pump is Cornerstone. And the warehouse is a grant line that got heavily modified. Okay, last picture for today. The brakeman is riding the soon to be retired Alco S2 2367. It's on the Santa Ana turn. And it's spotting an ancient wood ice reefer that's been refurbished with sloped floors by Burlington Northern to handle bulk potato shipments. So it's going to the produce distributor that provides Alpha Beta and Safeway markets with their produce. So the authentic reefer is from Intermountain and that exact number, I have a picture of it with potatoes sitting in Fullerton, that exact car number. The switcher is Atlas Gold Line with DCC. Freightliner cab over is Athern Blue Box with the Safeway logo and the reefer trailers are all train works. The produce distributor kit there is an Ayers kit. That's a, an actual prototype from Garden Grove, California. And unfortunately it doesn't show up in the picture, but the opposite wall, a uh, far wall of this was a um, extended and thickened wall because they were next to a, um, a uh, gasoline products distributor. So if there had ever been an explosion, they were hoping they could save the lives of the people in the produce thing. Never happened though. So, and that, that kit is of a um, prototype that was on the Pacific Electric in Garden Grove. All right, that's the end of the show. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so, thank you guys. <laughs> generally because they were being downgraded in service to uh, things like yard service or um, uh, interchange trains and things like that. So yeah, older power and like later type of service. I don't know how you have a story for every single scene <laughs> right. on your layout. Right. So it's, 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 if, you, if you move your train then the scene changes, right? Yeah, so those, that was in the moment there. Yeah, in the moment. That, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good trip. Thank you, Barry. And Robin. Anybody online? Questions, anyone? Anybody still awake? Russell, anybody there? Sure. I always have a question. You know that. Yeah. Uh, Barry, Barry. Barry, you better sit down. All right. Here we go. Better get my Barry. notes. Barry, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Good for you. So we want to see tons of railroad stuff done now. Okay, yeah. I'm going to learn how to solder and many other skills. <laughs> well, you, you know you have guys to, willing to help you. Yes, thank uh, you. Uh, I, I caught where a lot of the buildings were prototype. Uh, now, the different scenes along the, the layout that's going to be uh, torn down were were those um, actual or 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 close to scenes uh, along the, uh, the 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 real deal that you were talking about? Right. So of course my layout is Orange County, so Riverside is the next county over, for instance. Uh, but still, Southern California. I'm trying to create that Southern California look. And so the scenery around each of those buildings would represent what that particular industry was doing and, and the type of cars that would serve it would be authentic ones, even from photographs that I have. Okay, all right, good, good, all right. <clears throat> Thank you. You bet. <clears throat> Any other questions? What's the name of the production that the last Jerusalem train uh, Pentrex. I'm sorry. Pentrex. Pentrex. 
Yeah, that's the company that produced that. Yeah, www.pentrex, P-E-N-T-R-E-X.com. Is that something I can find online? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an old SLR camera. Pentrex, yeah, Pentax. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see that video in the Monday morning videos. Mm -hmm. And and Barry, what kind of Argus uh, camera did you have? Well, my dad had an Argus C3 35 millimeter camera. So in 1975, I started taking pictures with it. And the presentation I gave to the NRHS on Tuesday night was from 79 to 75 to 80. Uh, Kodachrome 25 and Kodachrome 64. Yeah, <laughs> right. hold on a minute. So, Just, uh, this ought to be interesting. He just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Russ was going to find this, this C3. I bet. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, my, my you see, it is. I wore that thing out literally um, around 1980. Oh, the lens true. wouldn't even work anymore. I can't, oh, that's so cool. I, I can't. Uh, you know how to do I that? I can't see the, the. No, I can't see the number uh, of what. Uh, uh, what what model number? But uh, let's see if we can. Right in front of you. Right in front of you. Right in front of you. Right in front of your body. Right. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, this and this was my dad's <laughs> that I got to take some pictures with it. So, isn't that great? So um, it had a big flash attachment with these gigantic bulbs yeah, that you put in one at a time. It would scare people when I would take pictures in passenger trains, but I took a lot of pictures with it. And so um, we'll do that some other time. All righty. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank you again, Barry. Okay. For you folks here and y'all at home, that's it for today. Thanks for attending.